So Arizona was better than Dallas all day yesterday. There was never a doubt they were better despite missing several of their stars. Some things are going to always matter in football. I mean, we change all these sports now with analytics. There's more views. There's more teams. There's more playoffs. There's more rules. There's be- Some things never change in the NFL. A coaches and A quarterbacks win Super Bowls. And there's very few exceptions. And Dallas has a B and a B plus. Dallas, once again, has feasted. You guys keep calling it a Dak slump. I think it's what he is. Dallas has feasted again this year in a bad division, 5-0 and against the NFC East, and they're average 6-5 and against everybody else. And Dallas has feasted on very average quarterbacks. They beat Taylor Heineke twice. They beat a very young Mac Jones in Week 6, had to go to overtime. They beat Mike Glennon. They beat Taysom Hill. Jalen Hurts just coming out of the shoot for Philadelphia. <sighs> Six and five against everybody else. You know, it's funny. I I watch this all the time. The NFL is a salary cap sport. It's not baseball. It's a salary cap sport. What's my always my rule? Pay big money rarely. Very infrequently. Guarantee it. Don't have it ding your cap. So everybody in the media, oh, Dak deserves the big bag, big bag, Dak. Dak." It's funny. Media is great at paying people when they don't have the bank. Media wants to pay everybody, and now you're stuck with Dak, who's a B-plus quarterback, a great kid, a better intangibles than tangibles, $40 million a year. Did you watch that game with Kyler Murray? Did you watch third downs? Dak was three for 11 with excellent weapons. Kyler Murray was missing DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore, James Conner on the road, missing all of them. Third down, he was magical. Dak had his guys three for 11. You watched them, really? Yeah, everybody in the media wants to pay everybody. It's like you ever run a business? That's, it's a salary cap league. Even in my tiny businesses, I don't have a salary cap. I have salary limitations. NFL's got a salary cap. And, you know, I've said this before. The Jalen Smith deal for the Dallas Cowboys. Jalen Smith's a great story and a great kid. But they paid him too much money, and he couldn't play due to injuries. And you know who lost this weekend? The good stories. Cincinnati football, they deserve a chance. Not competitive. SEC's overrated. They won. Give Dak the bag. Good luck. Tua deserves an opportunity to carry this team. He stinks. AB just deserves another chance. It's OBJ's fault. He's a bad guy. Poor Cleveland got unraveled by... No, he was great too. That's who won this weekend. The SEC, Nick Saban, great quarterbacks, OBJ. You know, that's who won. So don't confuse great story with great team or great intangibles with great quarterback. Dak is pretty good. And so I picked the Cowboys to make the playoffs this year and be pretty good. Because with Dak, they'll always be pretty good. Because he's a leader, he's a smart kid, he works hard, the players like him, he's athletic enough. But you're watching him and Kyler on the same field. Kyler's missing everybody. When Dak doesn't get 100 yards rushing, he doesn't win games. He doesn't beat good teams. I mean, oh, he beat Justin Herbert. Yeah, no touchdowns, one interception. (laughs) That was his game against Justin Herbert, who threw for almost 350 yards. So I guess the 2020 Dallas reality is, Again, some things never change, although a lot changes in football and baseball and basketball. But A coaches, your Coughlins, your Andy Reeds, your Bill Walshes, your Jimmy Johnsons, you know, you start looking at all these Super Bowl coaches. You know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're saying Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy won a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers now is the only quarterback left in the National Football League that throws 40 touchdowns a year and almost no interceptions. Okay. I know, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. And there are outliers. But when I look at McCarthy, I think he's a good B coach. And I look at Dak, and I'm like, he's a B, B-plus quarterback. Y'all wanted to pay him the bag. Okay, he's got it for several years. But boy, does he need a running game, and boy, does he need a left tackle. And Kyler Murray yesterday didn't have a lot of stuff and it, on the road, and it didn't matter. That's why I kept saying with Kyler Murray, I'm like, young quarterbacks struggle more than like a Brady or an Aaron Rodgers if they, you know, if they miss uh, a star receiver or a star something. And he got, you know, Kyler yesterday got a couple pieces back, but not all of them. 
And yet he was magical. Boy, was he good on third down. What happened yesterday is a team in Arizona missing several of its biggest stars, has a magical quarterback, went on the road and led every second of the game. And there wasn't really a point ever when you thought Dallas was better. That's what really happened yesterday. That was just word salad. All right, let's talk um, Rams road win. A lot of people beating up on Matt Stafford, but I want you to think about this. Back in the 70s and 80s, now I know a lot of you don't remember this, but there was kind of a fascinating player. His name was Dave Kingman. He was like six foot six. He was this lanky, wiry, strong 6'6 six, six guy. And all he did was strike out or hit home runs. Like that's all he did. And so he never got big money. He was considered sort of a limited player. Today, he would be Cody Bellinger of the Dodgers, who mostly strikes out and hits home runs. Now, Bellinger's better than Kingman, but the point is analytics makes us view the world differently. Is that Kingman had a lot of Cody Ballinger. Like, now Cody's a better defensive player, but analytics has said ground ball's the death of you. Strikeouts aren't. Jack's strikeouts. And it's funny, football used to be different. You know, you'd, you'd have maybe the Rams, the greatest show on turf in St. Louis. Like, you had a name for any great offense. Now you have divisions with three great offenses. You have conferences with seven, eight great offenses. It used to be if you were a big offense, you got a nickname. It's the greatest show on turf. That team wouldn't even be the greatest offense in the NFC West. (laughs) So it's funny about how the game has changed. It used to be if quarterbacks make mistakes, lose games, oh boy, we're loser. You can't throw a pick six. You can't throw, oh boy. You watch the NFL now? Guys are throwing for 35 touchdowns, 40 touchdowns. Mahomes threw for 50 touchdowns. Yesterday, Tom Brady had a pick six. He won. Matt Stafford had a pick six. He won. Derek Carr had two picks. He won. In 2021, you can overcome a really bad mistake. What you can't overcome is Tua. What you can't overcome is low ceiling. You want to know the interception leaders in the NFL this year? Near the top. Joe Burrow. Matt Stafford, uh, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. Those guys are all going to make the playoffs. Here's who's not. Jared Goff, Tua, Kirk Cousins. You can't overcome average at that position. And so, you know, years ago, we just beat up on quarterbacks. If you looked years ago, it was like defensive coaches were 75% of the league. Offensive coaches now in every division. Every division in the NFC. Oh, by the way, the wild card teams, Philadelphia's got an offensive coach. San Francisco's got an offensive coach. And the NFC may just go all offensive coaches. Arians and Matt LaFleur and Mike McCarthy and Nick Sariani start looking up and down. It's all offensive coaches. And increasingly, Zach Taylor, oh, he's going to win his division. Offensive coach. Andy Reid, he's going to win his division. Offensive coach. Yeah, 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 I know there's uh, Belichick and Sean McDermott, but every coach in the AFC East is a defensive coach, so somebody's going to win it. And I would argue Brian Dables, the hottest coaching prospect as a coordinator in that division. So the best defensive coach, Belichick, has got a great OC, and Sean McDermott's a defensive coach, and he's got a great OC. It's very obvious what's happened. You can make mistakes. But you know what Matt Stafford did yesterday? Fourth quarter, eight for eight. Fourth quarter passer rating, 155. Matt Stafford in the fourth quarter this year, 11 touchdowns, no picks. Look it up. Matt Stafford leads the entire NFL in second half passer rating. I can deal with Matt Stafford's pick six occasionally. What I can't deal with is Tua's ceiling. Matt Stafford yesterday just getting crushed. Oh, it's another bet. It's like he leads the league when it matters. And that's what I want from a quarterback. Can you make Carson Wentz is reckless. My problem is I don't see the ceiling this year. Sam Darnold's reckless. I don't get the ceiling. Matt Stafford's reckless. What has he got? 38 touchdown pass. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Stafford has been the NFL's best quarterback in the fourth quarter this year. He has been the best 11 touchdowns, no picks, number one passer rating. I can deal with some picks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.